In chapter one, we learned that there are five major categories or elements of accounts. Assets, items of value that are owned, li liabilities, claims against assets by outsiders, es essentially debt, equity or capital, the amount claimed by the owner of a business or stockholders, revenue, amounts earned from a service provided or from a product sold, and expenses which would be cost incurred in generating that revenue. The second thing you learned in chapter one is that there are only two things that happens to an account when we record a transaction. Either the account is increased, which would be represented by a plus, or it would be decreased, represented by a subtraction or a minus. In chapter two, we continue the same concept of the five categories of accounts and increasing and decreasing of an account with each transaction. The key difference is that now we're going to use debits and credits to record those increases and decreases. And so we need to know how to increase an account, how to decrease an account. And it's very simple. The first thing you have to know is that assets and expenses are increased on the left side. Okay, every account has a left side and a right side. However, the way that you will increase or decrease will depend on the category. So for assets and expenses, the increase side is on the left, which is referred to as the debit side. The decrease side for assets and expenses will be on the right. So to decrease assets and or expenses, you would record an entry on the right, which is the credit side. For liabilities, equity, and revenue, the increase side is on the right, which would be the credit side, and the decrease side would be on the left or the debit side. So notice, debit simply means left, and credit simply means right. What happens to an account when you debit or credit will depend on the side on which the entry is recorded and the type of account. So for example, if I showed you an account and I did not tell you the name of the account, for example, if I hid the name of this account, cash, which is an asset, and you saw these debits and credits, you would not know if the account was increased or decreased. So bear that in mind. Every account has two sides, a left side, which is the debit side, and a right side, which is the credit side. However, the impact of a debit will be dependent on the category. If it's an asset or an expense, a debit will be an increase, and a credit will be a decrease. If it's liability, equity, or revenue, then a debit would be a decrease, and a credit would be an increase. So again, only increases and decreases, but we're going to use debits and credits to record those increases and decreases. Here we have similar transactions as those we had in chapter one, where Johnston d deposited $35,000 in a bank account in the name of the business. And just like we did in chapter one, we identified Johnston, the owner, and the business as two separate entities. And in this case, the owner is depositing money into an account that is in the name of the business. So we need to record that the business received cash and that the cash was provided by the owner. So we need a cash account, which is an asset for the business, and we need an equity account for the owner. We're going to increase the asset for the business 
and we're going to increase the equity for the owner and so we record that transaction by putting on the left side of cash which is an asset a debit of 35,000 and in the capital account which is the equity account for the owner we record a credit for $35,000. Your debit should always be equal to your credit. So total debit should always be equal to total credit for each and every transaction that you record. Second transaction, the business bought filing cabinets on account from Muller office supplies $560 so we know that a filing cabinet was acquired by the business and they did not pay cash they're putting it on an account with Muller office supplies and so they owe Muller office supplies $560 and they received an asset called filing cabinets for $560 Based on the accounts that we have for this company, we are going to record the filing cabinet in an account called office equipment. And we're going to increase the asset. So we debit the asset for $560. And we are going to record a liability. So accounts to be paid, accounts payable for $560. Again, debit equals credit. Third transaction, transaction C, the business paid cash for chairs and carpeting for the waiting room, $835. So cash is involved in this transaction and they acquired an asset called chairs and carpeting. And so we're going to record an increase in one asset for the chairs and carpeting and a decrease in another asset cash to show that we paid for the item. And so we would record in an account called office furniture, $835 on the left or the debit side. And since we decreased our cash, we record an entry on the right, which is the credit side, for $835. Moving along here a little quickly, we bought a photocopier from Rob's office equipment, $650, paying $250 in cash and placing the balance on account. So the total asset acquired was for $650. That's the increase in our asset for the photocopier. And then we paid $250, so our cash is gonna go down by $250, and we're going to owe the balance of $400, which is $650 minus the $250. So we're gonna increase our assets. Remember, assets are increased with a debit, an entry on the left, and so we will have an entry in our office furniture for the $650. And then in our cash account, we're going to reduce our asset cash by $250. And then the remaining amount is a liability. And so we increase our debt by $400. Again, notice total debit, $650 is equal to the sum of the credits 250 in cash 400 in accounts payable equal the 650 then in item d actually we just did d let's move on to to e where we received and paid the telephone bill which included installation charges it 185 dollars so we are receiving a bill for a service that we have already used so we have an expense for telephone and we paid for it in cash so we have to show what happened why we spent the money what was it spent for so we're going to record an expense for the telephone bill and we're going to record a reduction in our cash so our expenses will increase and remember assets and expenses are increased with debits so we have an expense account for 
the utilities and we are going to record that amount as a debit and then we will reduce our cash by the same amount and so we have a reduction of a hundred and eighty five dollars that will have to be uh, recorded in our cash account for that particular item next we move on to our sale or we sold professional services on account so we provided service however we have not received payment we are putting this on account for one of our customers and so we're going to record that the firm earned revenue from professional services and the company expects to receive that money in the future and so we're going to increase one asset called accounts receivable for the total amount and we're going to show that we earned so revenues will be increased with a credit for 2255 then we are going to record our next transaction where we received and paid the bill for the state physician or physical therapy and so that charge was for four hundred and forty five dollars again our asset cash went down by four hundred forty five dollars and we're paying for the state physical therapy uh, convention and so we have an expense and so our cash will decrease with a credit because it's an asset we credit for four hundred forty five dollars and then we're going to record an expense for $445. In this case, we're putting it in miscellaneous expense because we don't anticipate having a lot of expenses of that type. And so we just put it in a miscellaneous, but it's an expense account, just the same. So we debit to increase that expense. Moving right along quickly here, we received and paid the electricity the electrical bill three hundred and thirty five dollars again we analyze and we notice that we are paying cash so our asset cash is going down and we're paying for an expense three hundred thirty five dollars for electricity and so we decrease our cash with a credit for three hundred thirty five dollars and we would record a debit to our utilities for the amount then we have where we are making a payment to Muller $250. Remember earlier we had bought the filing cabinets from Muller and it was for $560. We're making a payment against that account for $250. And so we decrease our cash by $250. And then we go to the account where we owe and we decrease the account so we debit $250 and so this debit to the payable which is a liability will decrease the amount from 560 down to a smaller amount it will decrease by $250 we're almost there we received cash on account um, from customer $1,940 please note in this case we're not providing any service we already provided the service we're now receiving money to be applied against the customers account so we record the increase in the cash of $1,940 and we're going to apply the amount against the customers account and so our cash, which is the asset, is going to be increased or debited by $1,940. And then the account for the customer, which would be our accounts receivable, is going to be debited, credited, sorry, for $1,940. Then we have our payment on account to Muller office supplies $250 and so we're going to decrease our cash by $250 
and record a reduction in the payable. I think we already did that for $250. Then we paid the office rent for the current month, $1,245. Again, we're paying for the use of the office. So that's an expense and we are doing so with cash. So we're gonna decrease our cash by $1,245. So notice that I'm crediting cash with $1,245 to decrease the asset. And of course, as indicated here, we are paying for rent, which is an expense. And so we will have an account for rent, which will be debited with the same amount. We also sold professional services for cash, 1,950. So unlike an earlier transaction where we earned revenue and received the money, plan to receive the money later. In this case, we provided the service, so we earned the revenue and we also received the cash. So we increase our asset cash by 1,950 and we record an increase in our revenue. Revenue is increased with the credit and so we credit revenue, in this case, an account called professional fees, 1,950. We are at our penultimate transaction where we pay the salary of the receptionist, $950. So we're gonna decrease our cash by 960 and we increase our expenses, the salary of the receptionist by $960. So cash will be decreased by 960. And of course we are paying for this particular expense. And so we debit an expense account called salary expense for $960. Finally, the owner, Johnston, withdrew cash for personal use, $1,200. So we're gonna record a reduction in the cash for the company for $1,200 and a decrease in the equity of the owner for $1,200. Notice carefully how this one gets recorded. Here is my decrease in cash for $1,200. And then we are going to record a similar entry, a corresponding entry for our capital. Instead of going directly to the capital account though and making an entry on the debit side to decrease it, we instead use a temporary account. It's called a contra equity account. Fancy term, but essentially it's a temporary account that is used to record in this case changes in the equity. And so we debit. So whatever we would have done in the capital account, we are doing the same thing in this contra equity account. So we're debiting $1,200. And that's it for our transactions. Now that we have made all these debits and all these credits, we are wanting to know what the balance or the difference is between the debits and the credits. General rule, assets and expenses, since they are the increased side is on the left, the debit side. We refer to those accounts as having debit balances. If an account is increased on the credit side or the right side, we refer to those accounts as having credit balances because most of the time, the total amount recorded on the credit side for liability, equity, and revenue, the credit will exceed the debit. For those accounts, assets and expenses where the increase side is on the left or the debit side, the total debits will exceed the total credits. And so here we add all the debits and we get 38,890. And when we subtract the credits of 5,705, we're left with a balance of 33,185. So that balance is the difference between the two sides. And we refer to this as having a debit balance. Same thing would be true for accounts like your accounts receivable, office equipment, and your liabilities. We would find the difference between the two sides. 
and then we test the accuracy of the entries by preparing what is called a trial balance, a trial or test of the balances. And all you do here is you take the balance from each account. And so if the difference is a debit because the debit side is larger, that difference goes in the debit column of the trial balance. On the other hand, if the difference is where the credit was larger, we put the amount on the credit side. So look at accounts payable with a credit of 710. When you look at the account, you notice that there was a total of 960 on the credit side, which is the increased side, and 250 on the debit, which is the decreased side. And so the difference of 710 is referred to as a credit balance. And therefore, that difference goes in your trial balance in the credit column. And what you will notice is that all your assets will tend to have debit balances all your expenses will have debit balances because that's the increased side whereas your liability and your equity accounts will have credit balances revenue will have credit balances so once the two sides are equal debits equal to credits we are confident that at least we have a debit for every credit. Doesn't mean that no mistakes were made, but we did at least have a debit for every credit. We prepare what is called an income statement, which is a special report prepared where we record all the revenue and subtract all the expenses, and the difference will be our profit for that particular period. Then we have what is called a statement of owner's equity, which gives us a summary of what happened to the equity of the owner. So it will show you how much equity or capital the owner had at the beginning of the period, how much was brought in, how much profit was added to the account, how much the owner withdrew, and therefore how much is left. And finally, the balance sheet, which gives you a snapshot of where the business is at a specific point in time. And so on July 31st of the current year, we show all their assets, total of what they own, and we get a total of 35,545. We show what they owe, and we show their equity, and the total asset should be equal to the liabilities which would be the 710 i apologize for it not showing up here but the 710 would be reported as accounts payable and that should equal when we add our equity it should equal the total assets